So I asked the kids a question when they came forward. Can words ever be a gift? And I want you to think about a time when someone has said something to you and the words that they spoke were a gift to you. Maybe someone spoke a word to you that helped you make sense of something that you were going through in your life. Maybe it helped you reframe something that you were facing. Maybe someone has spoken words to you that encouraged you to keep moving forward through a difficult time. Maybe someone has spoken words to you that were a balm for your soul, that brought you peace in a time of suffering or trial. I think words can most definitely be a gift. I was listening to an interview on a podcast a few weeks ago, and it was a comedian that I enjoy. He was being interviewed by Terry Gross, and the you may know John Hodgman from a number of different things, but I think he's most popularly known in the Mac versus PC commercials. He's the one on the left who was the stodgy old PC, and he was always being compared to the newer, hipper, fresher Mac. But he's done a lot of funny things. But in this interview, it all of a sudden took a serious turn when they started to speak about the death of his mother and how that impacted his life. Um, I'll, I want to play a clip for you, but I want to tee it up by talking about how his mother was raised Catholic, and when she became an adult, she made the conscious choice to become an atheist. And so he grew up with no religious faith or in any religious tradition at all. But when his mom was dying from lung cancer, she started to pray the Lord's Prayer. And the family would pray the Lord's Prayer with her. And so John Hodgman talks about this experience. Uh, I, I just saw Bruce Springsteen on Broadway. Yes. And he ends the show. Hot well, he ends the show with the Lord's Prayer. Yeah. And um, it's a beautiful prayer. I mean, I, I'm Jewish, so yeah. I never paid that much attention to the Lord's Prayer. But just hearing he, hearing him recite it because he's such a good, you know, he's so good with words, his own, or, you know, a, with a... He's beautiful reciting a prayer as beautiful as the Lord's Prayer. Yeah. But I heard it differently than I ever had before because I've always heard it, heard it kind of mumbled like, give us this day our daily bread. And right. it always sounded to me like, today I give us our meals, thanks. Yeah. But, but the way well, he said yeah. it, I heard it as, give us this day. It sounded so beautiful to me. Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> I had always heard it mumbled by my cousins at their confirmations and I didn't know what it was. And then my, the, 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 the interesting part of my mom reciting the Lord's Prayer was that she was reciting the Catholic Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's already beautiful poetry. I mean, it's just the meter of it is incredible. Uh, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And that's where it stops in the, in the Catholic tradition. And first of all, one of the things I remember is like, I love saying the word trespasses. It's such a great, <laughs> I don't know why I, I, I never said trespasses. I said trespasses and the forgiveness in it. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. It's like, I'm not sure that I can be convinced that I've always forgiven those who have trespassed against me, but this gives me something to aspire to. But then it was my, my wife, then my very new wife, Catherine, in the room who said, it's funny, I grew up Episcopalian, and we had more. And at the end, instead of uh, deliver us from evil, in the Episcopalian tradition, you would add, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Amen. Which, frankly, is not my favorite part of the Lord's Prayer, because it's really worshipful and less poetic than the first part. But my mom had never said it, and now she added it to the prayer. Hmm. Um, which was... Uh, it was an amazing moment. It was a kind of, you know, wasn't it like an acknowledgement that she was dying when she... It was an acknowledgement of death, but it was... Um, I just need a second, I'm sorry. It was um, a gift that my wife was able to give to my mother. 
and to me, because I certainly had never heard it before. And then uh, something we could all share together as an extended family for a very brief period of time. So. Do you still find yourself saying the Lord's Prayer to yourself? Yeah, every night. Did you catch the last question? Do you find yourself ever praying the Lord's Prayer? And he says, yep, every night. That prayer became a gift to him in that experience of losing his mom. And his mom prayed the Catholic version, and his wife, being a Protestant, being an Episcopalian, added that last line, and I think anyone who's grown up in a Protestant tradition or who has known the Lord's Prayer that way, if you've ever been to worship in a Catholic church, has the, other, has the rest of the congregation stopped and then you kept going? Has anyone had that experience? Or maybe those of you who grew up Catholic and you come into a Protestant congregation, you always want to stop and then everybody keeps going. But he lifted up that moment as being such a gift because his wife gave that to his mom, and his mom accepted that gift. And that was almost a way of his mom accepting his new wife. It was this beautiful moment, so he said it was a gift to him to get those last words of the Lord's Prayer, even though he said it wasn't his favorite part of the Lord's Prayer. But did you notice when I was sharing you the words that Jesus gave to his disciples in that sermon, it didn't include the, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The oldest manuscripts that we have of the Gospels do not include that ending. But some scribes at some point thought, this prayer needs to be completed. There needs to be something else. So if you go home, there are some Bibles that include, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. But in a lot of Bibles, it's not there or it's just a footnote that says you could add that part. But this prayer became a gift to him. And I think what struck me so much about this conversation, this unexpected, beautiful moment in this interview, is that it was two people who didn't grow up with the Lord's Prayer. We're discovering it. We're discussing the beauty of it, what they discovered. They talked about the poetry of the Lord's Prayer, how it's beautiful poetry, how it's simple, how it's beautiful. And for both of them, it became this gift because they had kind of a different way of approaching it with curiosity and openness. And I wonder for those of us who have grown up praying this prayer, I think sometimes we forget the gifts that lie in this prayer. This prayer actually was a gift that Jesus gave to his disciples. He gave them the gift of words so that they could communicate with their creator. It's a beautiful, simple gift. He starts out saying, you don't need lofty phrases and piling up all sorts of flowery words. When you pray to God, you can use these words. Jesus gave his disciples a number of gifts. So I want us to discover some of the giftedness of this prayer together. First, Jesus says, you can refer to God as Father. So we get this title for God, the creator of the universe, that we can also call Father, this divine parent, this parent who is infinitely good and loving and caring and guiding and correcting. What a, the goodest kind of, the goodest, the best kind of parent beyond our comprehension can even be. But that intimate term of calling God Father. Another gift that I find in the Lord's Prayer is that we refer to God as our Father. Jesus didn't say, when you pray, say, my Father in heaven, give me my day, my, and give, forgive me. It's all we and us. Give us our daily bread. Forgive us our debts. This prayer not only connects us to God intimately, like God is our parent and we are God's children, but it also reminds us that we're all brothers and sisters. This is our Father that we're speaking to. Another gift in this prayer is that I think it centers us. Because when we are praying to God, so often we're so, we can only see what's immediately in front of us and the immediate difficulty that we're facing or what we're going through in life. But this prayer calls us to put our focus on God. It centers us on God. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. 
your will be done. All of these things put our focus on God as we pray. In our catechism, it says that God's name is holy whether we acknowledge it or pray it. But when we pray this prayer, God's name becomes holy to us. That's a beautiful gift that we can receive. Another gift in the prayer is the gift of forgiveness. It talks about forgiving our debts as we forgive those who are our debtors. And then if you notice at the end, Jesus puts a footnote, like he gives us the words of this prayer, and then he says, no, really, I want you to pay attention. If you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father forgives you. And if you don't forgive, your heavenly Father can't forgive you because you're withholding your heart from God. Jesus really seems to hit this forgiveness thing hard. And we've just now been finishing our forgiveness teaching series. Why is forgiveness such a big deal to Jesus? Well, I think if you know the rest of the story, what actually ends up happening to Jesus, how he offers himself, how he offers his life for the forgiveness of all of our sins, forgiveness is a big deal to our God. But I think it's such a big deal because God also cares so much about our connection to one another. And often the only way to reestablish a broken connection between us as brothers and sisters is through that act of giving and receiving forgiveness. It's that thing that binds us together. For some reason, God thinks it's a big deal that we're not only connected to him, but we're also connected to each other. That's a powerful thing. I think it's a double gift. In this prayer, we get that deep connection to God, and we remember our connection to one another. And we remember to work on that as well. And I think it is such a powerful gift because so often in life, we face things that are too hard for us to bear all by ourselves. As a pastor, I'm called into situations with families where people are facing things that are too hard for them to carry. The death of a loved one, a sickness, an uncertainty in their life. And the prayers of people surrounding them is such a gift to them. But also a really huge gift is when you have a living, breathing person sitting by your side when you are going through that difficult time. And remembering that connection you have to each other and to your God is such a beautiful thing. Martin Luther said this about times when we can run to God. At such times when we are weary, our only help and comfort is to run here and seize hold of the Lord's Prayer and speak to God from our hearts. These words have already been given to us. We don't have to invent flowery words. We can pull these out of our back pocket and know that we have these words as a reminder of our connection to God and our connection to each other. There's one part of the interview with John Hodgman that I didn't play, but he talks about the reason why he prays the Lord's Prayer every day. He said, I think the reason I do it is because when I say these words, I feel less alone. I think that's a beautiful definition for prayer. When I say these words, I feel less alone. I think that's the point of prayer. Remembering that connection to our God, remembering that connection to our brothers and sisters. When I actually look at this prayer, I discover again for myself that it is a gift. And every night when I put my son to bed, after we read stories, I say the Lord's Prayer with him. I actually sing it to him. And I hope that that's a gift to him that he can use through his life. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Amen.